Um, can you just kind of take us through the – with yesterday, was that more about the balls and strikes? Was that about the, the struggles? Was that about the season? Was that kind of a combo of everything? No. Uh, it was about the balls and strikes. It's, and, it, and, it, and it seems to be a consistent thing with him. That wasn't a one-time thing. We, we've seen that before, um, and it just didn't seem to be you – building up with you. We heard it from the broadcasters. You see it on Twitter with the fans and you see it from the players as well. I guess that makes it even tougher to handle. What? Uh, the, the inconsistency. In the zone. And uh, of, you mean last night's game or, or in general with. It, it's, it's been happening in general, it seems. Well, you know, I don't, you know, I, you know, I look at, I look at each game and, you know, I look at, you know, every single pitch and I think, I think the umpires do it you know, a, a great job. All, in all fairness, I think, uh, you know, overall the umpiring has been great uh, this year uh, and in years past for that matter. It's, it's not easy, uh, but like anything else, uh, you know, every, everybody now and then has a, you know, has a, has a tough day. Uh, you know, I just thought, you know, yesterday there was a few pitches that, you know, really hung in the balance, uh, you know, for the outcome of an at-bat and potentially to swing an inning. So, uh, you know, that's where my frustration was, but uh, I have a, you know, a great deal of respect for the umpires. Uh, you know, I, you know, you know, Phil Cousy for me has been one of the best umpires that I've been around, uh, you know, in my career. I think he's passionate about umpiring. He's got a nice personality about him. He runs a good game. But I just thought last night there was a, you know, a couple calls that, uh, you know, I thought were not called properly. Thank you, buddy. Yep. Thomas Harden. Hey, buddy. You wanted to kind of um, check on a couple of things here. First of all, where is uh, Brendan Rogers, and are they playing games down there? Has he been able to hit against any competitive pitching? No, Brendan's with us, uh, Thomas. Uh, Kyle, uh, Brendan, and Peter Lambert are with our medical team. Uh, they're here in Los Angeles. Uh, they're, they're with us on this trip. You know, we felt as though uh, Keith and his medical team felt as though it was best to get those guys with us as they ramp up their activity. You know, once Brendan uh, gets close to playing, you know, we'll shoot him down to, to Arizona, uh, you know, to finish him off. But but right now, uh, you know, he took batting practice with the team. He took ground balls the other day. You know, he's, he's moving. Uh, you know, Keith has him doing a lot of uh, activity. So he's, he's gaining on it. But we felt as though best case scenario for him and where he is in the, in the rehab process now is to be with us. Same with Kyle, same with Peter. Um, I guess that said, with snow coming here, do you send them back to Arizona at the end of this trip just to uh, allow no, them? No, I, I think they'll stay with us because we can do some of the stuff inside that he's doing. Yeah, the, I mean, the snow is, uh, you know, from what I gather is coming. Uh, but, you know, I don't know how long it's going to last, a couple of days, but you know, we'll be able to get him out on the field in due time. And it, again, where he is in his rehab process. He's not, he's not close to playing in games. Okay. And I was going to ask also on, um, on Kyle, is he on a mound yet? Uh, I've seen some kind of video of him throwing down at, I think Arizona, but is he on a mound? Where does he? No, he's not. No, Kyle's not off the mound yet. No. I think, uh, I think today he was getting out to close to 120 feet, uh, you know, continuing the intensity uh, you know, the strength building efforts are, are going strong. So, uh, again, it's a process for Kyle, too, but he has not been off a mound as of yet. Okay. And um, I wasn't able to get in earlier. My connections can be kind of bulky here, but uh, just a day for Charlie and Trevor at this point? Uh, yes. Yeah, they're not starting today. Uh, you know, we'll see how the game unfolds <laughs> to see. Uh, you know, if we'll use them to, to help us win. But, yeah, I think, you know, Trevor's played every inning of every game with the exception of one. Uh, Charlie's had a couple uh, nights where he hasn't started. 
but I felt today was a good day to give him uh, a non-start. Okay, thank you, buddy. You're welcome, Thomas. Patrick? Buddy, like Thomas, I got in a little bit late on the call, so I apologize if I That's fine. Uh, go over retread ground. Um, getting back to the ejection last night, a lot of people will email me, me and ask this question, so I thought I'd ask you. Sure. Certainly, you're a little bit frustrated with the way the season's gone, and, and fans jump to the conclusion that your ejection is somehow premeditated. I didn't think so. I thought it was simply you were upset because it was a missed call that hurt your team in the moment. Yeah. I Am I right on that? You're, you're totally right. Yeah. I think the, yeah, the first question uh, asked me was, uh, you know, was along those same lines. Uh, no, this, that was just about, you know, last night's game at that moment where I thought, uh, you know, some pitches were missed and, uh, you know, I voiced my displeasure. Okay. And kind of a, a lighthearted question, if you will. Uh, I believe you've been injected seven times as a Rocky, 32 times in your career, they said last night. Do you have a routine when you get ejected or does it vary? I mean, do you it's go very, back and have a couple? It varies. It varies. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not to the Bobby Cox level uh, of ejections, uh, but it, it, it varies depending on uh, the ballpark, depending on uh, you know, how, I, how I feel. Uh, at that moment of ejection and what I do, but uh, yeah, there's not a, there's not a script. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, I follow the game. Uh, there are times when I, uh, you know, we'll, we'll talk strategy with the coaches. Uh, other times, uh, you know, I won't talk strategy with the coaches. Uh, you know, if there's questions to be asked about, you know, the, the pitching, uh, you know, I'll, you know, I'll make a, uh, you know, I'll make a move to, to, to go and find Fosty if there's something to do with the team and Red has a question, you know, word will get back to me or I'll, uh, uh, you know, have a preemptive strike and go find him. But it, it varies. It varies from ejection to ejection. Do you ever just go back to your office, put your feet up and crack open a couple of beers? <laughs> uh, Would you rather not say? <laughs> I'll, I'll put it this way. Uh, Maybe not put my feet up. <laughs> okay. And one more, more serious question. Uh, Dave Madigan uh, in spring training was telling us one of the things you guys really wanted to do offensively this year uh, was to be better hitters against the fastball. Uh, he told us that's something he thought last year, you guys, not everybody, but some of you guys just did not take advantage of fastballs. Um, in the early going, how is that looking from your perspective? Well, you know, we're, we're still, you know, we're still, you know, in that, in that philosophy that we do, we have to do a better job of hitting fastballs. I think the teams that are productive offensively do a good job of hitting the fastball. And I think that we have to, we have to get to that level of success uh, on hitting the fastball. Uh, you know, so far, you know, statistically not where we want to be, but hopefully in time we'll get there. But so in the early going, uh, you know, not not where we want to be on the fastball. Okay, thanks, buddy. Yes. Tracy? You've never had one of those ejections where you were a Maury Wills and put on a trench coat and a hat and went and sat in the outfield bleachers? Have not done that. Happened. Or put on a mustache, a fake mustache. I've not done that. What one. About the way that I mean, John had that tough first inning last night, but he's talking about how he's trying to uh, have a more relaxed attitude towards things and enjoy it. Do you think that showed up in those next three innings when he came back out and it seemed like he was able to put an inning behind him? You know, I, I thought you know through the first inning, I thought that John remained uh, remained poised and you know continued to to try to make pick, uh, pitches in a focused manner. I, you know, I thought he handled the first inning, you know, very well, uh, you know, when things started to go, you know, sideways on him, uh, you know, in between pitches, uh, his delivery, his mannerisms, all look, all look solid to me, uh, which was great. And even uh, in between innings, the conversations that we had were, were 
you know, very focused and intent on, you know, going back out and putting a zero on the board. So uh, I think, you know, yesterday was a, a great indicator of John uh, and where he was emotionally yesterday. When you uh, have an incident like last night, will you will you talk with Cuzzy about that or just to clear the air or do you just move forward? You know, it just you sort of move forward. Uh, you know, we'll we'll cross pass again. I mean, I will, you know, I'll go up to home plate tonight with the lineup cards and, you know, we'll, you know, we'll exchange, uh, you know, words like we always do. And I've, I've found over the years that I think both managers, coaches, players, umpires, uh, you know, when there is a, a heated argument or, you know, there is an ejection, I think all of us have the ability to turn the page rather quickly and get back to normal. I think that's the, the professionalism that we all show uh, from everybody who's on the field in, in competition and the umpires there as the arbiters that, uh, you know, they've been through this many, many times before. And I think they always have the ability to to show their uh, their class and dignity, as do I think the, the the players, coaches, and managers. Thank you, sir. Mark Stout. Hey, buddy. Quick on the bullpen tonight. You know, plus side guys went last night. I know they haven't pitched a ton. Is everybody good to go tonight? Everybody, everybody should be good to go tonight. Uh, you know, we'll make sure that you know once we get out to batting practice and guys start playing catch and loosening up. Uh, we'll see where they are, but I suspect everybody should be good. And we should have Sheen back, even though he threw, uh, you know, close to 60 pitches on uh, the first night in that I think he should be able to, to give us an inning or two as well. Have you announced, I haven't looked at the game notes. Have you announced uh, the starters for the Mets here? Uh, yes, uh, that will be Chi Chi. Uh, that will be Marquez. And that will be Sensatella. Thanks, buddy. Yep. Tracy, you have another one? Yeah, one more quick. Um, over the years, there's been a lot of uh, discussion about these late night starts on getaway days in Los Angeles. Is, has that ever bothered you um, to have those eight o'clock, you know, eight o'clock your time starts? Well, there's, uh, you know, I mean, that's obviously up to the, uh, the home team as they, you know, request start times with the schedule makers. Uh, you know, you've seen that before. It's rare. It's rare on getaway days, you know, especially traveling east for teams. Uh, but there are times that, you know, West Coast teams do do this. And even back east, there are times when you'll have a night game and, and, and travel. So, you know, that's it's part of the schedule. Because I've noticed with the Dodgers, they only play day getaway days when they're leaving, not when the visitor's leaving. That's very good detective work. Very good. Thank you. You're welcome. 